please welcome the players for today's next first round match. From France, Varvara Gretsheva. And from the United States, 2023 U.S. Open champion, Coco Golf. Fans the chair umpire for this first round match is Maria Cicak of Croatia. We have Drew with us for coin toss. Uh, ladies, at the end of the coin toss, please stay here with Drew for photo this way and the other way, all right? Uh, just a couple of things to tell you. Four serve blocks in each corner. Uh, then we have Tower Rex, white one, red one. Uh, a little bit about uh, technology we're using. We're using VR here. You have three successful challenges. You can challenge uh, touches, not ups, uh, hindrance, uh, foul shots. That's about it. If I, missed, if I forgot something, we can uh, check with it later, right? Another thing is uh, electronic line calling is live. Since the calls online, you can always ask for replay, right? And that's about it, I think. If you need anything, if something's wrong, we go through it, all right? Um, Barbara, heads, tails. All yours, Ruth. Sure. Yeah, photo, please. Warm welcome to the 2024 US Open. Day one of our main draw coverage, of course, from the Billie Jean King National Tennis Center in New York. We have first round action from the women's draw down in the bottom half today. That's our focus on day one, bottom half of the women's draw, bottom half of the men's draw as well. This is what we're looking at and looking forward to over the next uh, couple of hours. Coco Goff, the number three seed and defending champion, of course, in this section of the draw going up against Bavara Gracheva from France. Good all alongside Jill Kramis in the commentary booth. We've got Andrea Petkovic courtside for our second match of the day on this main show court at Flushing Meadows. And we're good to go. It's a beautiful day in this part of the world. A small, small risk of a, a, an occasional pop-up shower or storm. I understand over the next two or three days, but it's it's a warm one, 29 degrees Celsius, 84 Fahrenheit. There's not too much of a breeze, certainly not inside this incredible stadium down on the playing surface it is humid today so it's uh, it's going to be testing if this gets physical maybe over two or three hours or so 
First up, a warm welcome to you. Great to see you again. And it's uh, always great to see you, Lee. And great to be here. Exciting first day, exciting first match for uh, for Coco Golf. And, and how are you seeing this one generally? Is this a potentially difficult first match for her? I, I do think it can be tricky for a number of reasons. I think Kurcheva, I mean, just 24 years of age, but she's had some top 10 wins in her career. And so she gets up for these matches just coming off one of her best Grand Slams at Roland Garros, where she got to the round of 16. So she She's been feeling a little bit more conf confident on the big stage. Um, having said that, you know, Coco, obviously she's the favorite in, in this matchup. They've played one one other time, and that was earlier in January, where Coco won pretty significantly. But there's a lot more involved here. I mean, Coco is coming in as defending champions. There's definitely going to be some nerves in play. Um, and so just to have that on her shoulders, to be able to deal with all that and knowing all eyes are on her to see how she can perform yeah, defending defending her title, I think it's going to maybe put a little bit more pressure on her shoulders. So, But Gracheva having on this big stage now against in Arthur Ashe Stadium, but these are the type of matches where you do like to play the big seeds earlier on because it, it's, a, it's a chance to try and, you know, get that first win under your belt if you can. Yeah, normally it's a good time, well, probably the best time to play them before they get into their stride and start to build confidence. 20 years of age, of course. I could not believe reading uh, the notes and, and going through the research in the last 24 hours or so that this is Coco's sixth appearance in the main draw. It's unreal. Unbelievable. Well, yeah, 15 it? years old she, she started. So, yeah, we feel like it should be only her like, second appearance or something like that. Yeah. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. How, but how she's been able to deal with that, that, all of that at such a young age has been remarkable. Hasn't been the best summer, has it? I think we've got to be honest about that. We, we, we obviously judge these kinds of players so harshly, I suppose, at times. We're looking at them in terms of producing the best tennis in the world, going deep at the biggest events. Hasn't been able to do that. It was a disappointing Olympic Games for, for Coco, having been a flag bearer, of course, for the US, big deal. But she does have the head-to-head -head advantage. And they did play this year back in Auckland, one of the first weeks of the season in the quarterfinals. It was comfortable that day, one and one, but I think the feeling is asking around amongst coaches, broadcasters, colleagues, that, that this seconds. will be a lot closer. It's going to be a, a fascinating battle once Ladies we get underway. This match will play in charge of proceedings, sets. match two, inside our Thrash Stadium. It's going to be interesting to see how the crowd play a part as well today. What, this place will fill up once they realise Coco's on court, and, and that could help us settle down, perhaps. Yeah, of course, Ben Shelton just coming away with the win against Dominic Team. So a lot of times the fans just have a little and bit of a, a break before they start piling back into the stadium. There's a look at Coco Goff's team just trying to shield themselves from the sun. Brad Gilbert on the left there with the tan bucket hat. He's been in Coco Goff's corner, and her mom just behind Brad with the hat that says Coco. Um, that's Candy Goff. So consistently in the box, of course, supporting her daughter. But you, you brought up last year, too. It's interesting because of the rise that Goff had, especially last summer, winning D.C., winning Cincinnati, two of her biggest events on the calendar year. So had a lot to deal with. We are good to go. Second match of our opening day session inside the Althrash Stadium. Pavara Kracheva from France up against last year's champion Coco Goff about to get her title Bye, defense Bye, underway here in New York. Kracheva to get us underway. Fifteen. Coco Goff, but a huge test for this lady today as well, playing inside Arthur Ashe Stadium. This is a beast of a tennis stadium. Oh. Biggest purpose-built tennis stadium in the world, 24,000 seats or so. So we'll be, we'll be watching to see how easily she settles into this environment. stage. Oh. 
definitely different. I mean, just like you mentioned, the biggest court and the biggest stage as far as the stadium seating it can, and can feel overwhelming, but the space around the court too can just make everything seem that much larger. Frenchwoman, that will help settle her down. We're going to try and check in with uh, Andrea Petkovic, who will be with you on a regular basis. Get some of your insights and uh, the sort of things you're picking up from court side. I believe you're just two or three rows from uh, from the front. Just quickly, Andrea, are you seeing this as a, a test for Coco today? I think the important thing for Gracheva in particular, just to help settle those nerves, is she's got to trust her movement off the ground because Coco is the type that is going to try and take the ball early, going to try and rush Gracheva. But Gracheva's a, a good mover. She can handle that pace. And I think also to try and attack the second serve of the Goff in, in particular. And I think if you do that very early on in the match, that can put some pressure on that Goff second serve. for Coco Goff. Two of the areas we'll be keeping a close eye on the serve and the forehand. That's often two of the talking points. Certainly this summer, Coco's been able, una unable to reproduce the sort of consistency and form that she was enjoying earlier in the season. First opportunity. Gracheva's strategy right now in these last few points on the golf serve is to try and utilize that deep down the center of the court ball, but it's got to be deep because golf is so quick to get around the ball. That's good power off the ground from Gracheva. up to the ball from Goff. Nice to see Gracheva trying to throw in a little variety there just to catch Goff off guard, but Goff is so quick. That first step off the ground was very responsive. Forced errors. It's 
to make a fast start as well. Maybe try and avoid the crowd getting involved early. Yes. It's one thing, isn't it, having huge crowd support, but sometimes you need to make a good start to get the crowd involved or give them something to feed off. If you were to uh, lose serve early, then I think everybody starts to get a bit edgy. I'll say that response just backing herself shows me she's both backing herself on the serve. And that's one thing I like that she's incorporated with the serve. It's not always been about power all the time. She's using the slice serve a little bit more. That time took some pace off that wide serve. go again, looking to be aggressive. Yes. How does she get to look at a second serve? There wasn't a lot on that second serve, 74 mile an hour, and just one step that she needed to be able to attack that forehand ice shape off of that return. that I feel like she can struggle oh, with is that chip yeah, off yeah. pace where she has to generate her own acceleration, her own pace on the forehand. So another test for the world number three. Picked at uh, world number two recently, just dropped down to three. Brad Gilbert. Added her to a first singles major this time last year. Yes. She's finding the big serves at the right moment in this game. It's got to be one positive. Maybe not quite a regular enough basis so far. Just six of 12 first serves made. Turning into a lengthy opening service game for the, the American. Oh. Kick bounced up slightly higher on Gracheva. Point it. If there are nerves, there are bound to be. Any professional tennis player or former professional will always talk about the difficulty of an opening match, never mind being defending championship. And just getting on the board. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good feeling to to be able to hold in that first game. It was it was a tough one. She had a, a couple challenges, but came up big on the serve when she needed to. Introduced to the US Open for the first time this year. Oh, well done. <laughs> Took two or three attempts, but got there in the end. The fans getting very excited at <laughs> Woodcock, thinking she had already won the point on this approach shot. 
or on this volley actually, but it was good defense from Gracheva, just being able to anticipate forcing Goff to hit two or three extra balls. She got back well for that overhead. Oh. Did you get a sense of a bit of tension, Coco's side of the court in the opening service game, Andrea? So I felt like her adjustment steps, so the steps you need to put yourself in a perfect position were just a half step off, as if she was not as dynamic, whereas Gracheva was great from the start on. Yeah, I feel like Gracheva settled really impressively. She serves a double fault. The commentator's curse strikes again. So here we go. A couple of chances for Coco now. This will be the first to break in this match. And there is the break. It's a fortnight after a Successful fan week here. Yes. Coco's core position has changed slightly as well in, in the last few points, just willing to stay up on that baseline a little bit more, and that's where she wants to be. That's where she's going to be able to dictate these points better. Reason. I think it's fair to say there's a, there's a lot of intrigue as to exactly how Coco will play today is because it's been it's been an inconsistent summer. Very good Roland Garros made semis there and won her first Grand Slam doubles title on the Paris clay. Comes alongside Siniakova. Fourth round Wimbledon lost to Emma Navarro, fellow American in the, in the round of 16. It wasn't the best Paris Olympics, to be honest. Third round of the singles lost pretty early in the mixed and the doubles as well. In fact, lost those three matches within 48 hours or so. That, of course, was held at Roland Garros as well on clay. Oh. And then lost a second match in Toronto to Diana Schneider in straight sets. And Patinsova beat her in Cincy. That was her first match. So it, it's, it's, a, it's been a rough part of the year, isn't it? All players go through it. There are ups and downs through the season, but this is... A rougher part, yeah. Yeah, it hasn't been the best preparation, let's say. I think we have to remember, too, everything she's accomplished in the last year. I mean, she's played so many matches. And even you can say, I mean, she's still so young, but has actually quite a bit of experience for someone so young. Oh. But still learning, probably, to figure out how to balance how many tournaments to play, how many matches to play, when to take some breaks, when to, when to recover. Chavez was so far 
up inside the court and just didn't do enough with that approach shot, just rolled it back in. And you can't do that against someone like Goff, who's so quick, who's able to defend so well. Just got it deep enough to make it a difficult overhead. Lights. Russell. See how much Goff favors that backhand side. At any middle ball, yes. she's trying to run around to take control from that side. I mean, you can't blame her. It's one of it's the best shots on the tour. It's world class, and just feel so confident being able to, especially hit that inside out backhand. Second double fault brings up another opportunity to break. This is where Garcheva, I feel like if she gets a second serve, she's really got to take that risk go and go after her shot. Really try and put Goff on the defense. Yes. Yeah, it makes a difference when she gets that first ball in. First set percentage still in the mid-40s so far, so too low really. But uh, she'll be hoping that number improves. Another tricky service game for the third seed. Smart and Polly going behind Goff. Your natural instinct is to cover the open court, so always a good play to try and catch your opponent off guard. Another chance to break. I'm just going to take one of these eventually, you would imagine. Another one slips by. Yes. Smart from Coco here to continuously go into the forehand side on those break points from Gracheva, who also struggles more on that side, just as Coco Goff. All serves going into the forehand. That's a good point, Andrea, because even if your opponent knows that you're going uh, there, you can still have that slight advantage if your opponent can't connect cleanly with the ball. Another good out wide serve to the forehand from Goff. First set percentage a little low, but four aces is a, a decent number already. Point for 3 1 here. So I help to build the confidence so on Thrash Stadium today. Just a reminder to download the US Open app to follow your favorite players, track scores, stats. We've got all the match highlights on there, get player news. And uh, new this year, watching live 3D views of all the singles matches. That's available on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. 14 days of main draw tennis to look forward to. Oh. On the back of a hugely successful fan week. 
began uh, a week ago today. Just tactically waiting for the right moment to change that cross court rally down the line. And Gracheva doing it with a slice, just changing the rhythm, forcing Goff to have to hit up on the ball. And on that very next shot, that's where she was able to attack, just had a little extra time. Oh, just rushed that one slightly, Goff. How's Gracheva looking down there, Andrea? She looks she looks pretty settled to us up here. She does, she really does. She got a bit nervous and had a few words with her team after she got broken, but ever since then, again, very level-headed. She seems to be doing her That's thing. Amazing. She seems to have her tactics in place and is trying the best she can to put them to the test here against Coco Goff. A breakthrough Roland Garros, representing France for the first time, in fact, in Paris this year. Is uh, 24 years of age, was Moscow born, but relocated to the south of France, trained in down in Cannes, I believe, at the facility where Daniel Medvedev used to be based. He took a French nationality this time last year, so he's been playing under the French flag for just over 12 months or so. <laughs> really special. Roland Garros for her week, second week at a major for the first time in Paris and playing Roland Garros for the first time under the French flag as well. So everything fell into place. She had so many, so many smiles on her face, really enjoyed that moment. It said it meant so much to her to, to have that moment, to feel those emotions. Make sure she comes through that service game. She's. with the break. 3-2, first set. Oh. Just, Love just the, the match time, Andrea. 28 minutes for five games. That's pretty lengthy, isn't it? And, and probably demonstrates that even though Coco's a breakup, it hasn't been easy so far. Fifteen. Fifteen. Trying to pick you out, Andrea. We think we've got you just behind the umpire's I chair. Found aren't you. You? I found you early. Yeah. I see, yes. We can see you waving. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good spot. Now, most of these double faults that Goff's been hitting, she's been missing pretty long and that time just trying to take some pace off, trying to guide the ball in the court. There's the team trying to send some positive vibes her way. Another break points.
Yes. And she'd be pleased at least with the success rate when she's been facing breakpoints so far. Six out of six she saved. Goff. Advantage. Goff. Isn't a bad shot from Gracheva had some more height on it, but Goff did well to accelerate through that backhand to be able to set up that short ball. That's a percentage still hovering just above the 50 mark. Another tricky game on serve. She's done well to not Goff let it affect the, the rest return. of her game. Goff, yeah. sometimes you see players that That's are maybe it. struggling on their serve and, and can it affect how they move off the ground. They tend to get pretty, sometimes reactive, but with how fast Goff is around the court, she's not letting the fact that maybe she's not serving her best let her worry about the rest of her game. She's taking care of business off the ground pretty well. from Gracheva just trying to come forward into the net, force Goff to, to come with a great shot. It's the perfect shot to hit that lob over the backhand side. Very difficult one to handle. Confidence. She uses her left arm well here to be able to strike through that ball to, to create the angle. That's what really helps you get that ball cross court. Yes. First balling in his seventh game. Yeah. 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 trying to overpower Thank Goff. You. Goff, Thank you. Goff Thank you. Just so solid with that pace coming into her racket. Chances for the American. Significant number so far. The missed chances that Gracheva's had, six of them, non converted. Yeah. 
overhead just long. It is another break of serve. It hasn't been easy for Coco Goff, but she'll be delighted with a 5 2 lead. Congratulations, five games to two. First. 37 minutes in, we've got a new set of balls. Goff serving for this opening set, 5 2. Maybe a good time to, to mention for those who like their finer details. We've got a lot of serious tennis fans watching uh, watching the coverage over the next couple of weeks. It's the regular duty ball for the women this year. It in New is, York. yes, which makes the ball go through the air a little bit faster. Some players like that. Some players um, prefer a little bit the heavier balls. Coco, to me, is someone that, that would like that, I think, because she, she get, especially on the backhand, she gets great acceleration. That's the thing with the lighter balls. You have to make sure you keep going through the ball with that fast acceleration. That's what's going to help that ball come back down into the court. It tends to help on the serve 13, in particular because that ball is just off the court as well, going to skid through off the bounce. That's a decision that's largely made by the WTA. If you're wondering, the feedback comes from Let's the tour and that's passed on to the US Open. So it's, a, it's actually a change. Used a, a heavier ball this time last year in the ladies' draw. That serve has been working so well for her on the ad side. Consistently be able to hit her targets down the tee. Two set points. Just needs to keep an eye on that double fault. Oh, that's five now. That's six aces. Still got a chance to wrap up this opener. Yeah, that's a nice way to do it. Ace number seven wraps up the opening set. Time. Second set. So we'll see how this second set unfolds. Vavara Kracheva with plenty of work to do. Kracheva, Trading by a set, she'll get this second set underway. that point from Gracheva just being willing to stay on the cross court a little bit longer to the golf forehand but she's got to be willing to be patient stay in it wait for the right opportunity when she gets a shorter ball to step up and be aggressive But you because you get the sense that Gracheva knows she has to be more aggressive maybe than what she's comfortable with or what she's used to and, and so she's creating some unforced errors but at the same time you just add a little bit more safety margin more more spin and that's just too good 
Goff able to spread the court exceptionally well there. Oh, Brady Gracheva in trouble. Yeah, perhaps early signs that Coco's starting to settle. Three chances to break. First break point saved. Has to dig her heels in. Here you feel. It's a couple defended. One more chance for Coco. And all three saved. That's great yes. depth. And that's what we saw from Gracheva in the beginning of the set where it was dead even is the use of that deep middle ball that was able to push Goff off that baseline. to strike early. Fourth chance of the game. Okay. There is another break of serve. Into trouble because on one hand you have to try and stay low, on the other hand you have to get behind the ball. It's tough. That's a great point because it's, it's, it's tough to find that rhythm sometimes when you ha are playing against a player that has a different trajectory over the net, different pace, different spin. As soon as you start to feel comfortable, all of a sudden, Goff can throw in something different, completely throw you off. And then you add her speed, there's a whole other element and, and tough to feel like you have a sense of any kind of opening in the court. Just down at the court side around 11 o'clock this morning watching these two warm up. Coco Goff is a quite incredible athlete. Maybe something, perhaps something that doesn't necessarily come across if you're watching her on, on television. It's difficult to get a sense of What an really incredible athlete she is, never mind, you know, how she's striking a tennis ball or all those other elements that are required to, to be so good at this sport. It's a serious physical presence on court. You get a sense of that down there, Andrea. I think it's something, something I always notice. You know, it's, it, it, it's a treat, isn't it, to get so close to the action. These these very best players in the world of just how, just what an incredible athlete she is. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100. percent And it is my favorite position is the courtside position. <laughs> and of course, that goes for you know any athlete that's, that's at this level. It's a different view of the sport down there, isn't it? It really is. And uh, what Jill just so rightly mentioned is that the different um, the different difference of height be, uh, above the net. Gracheva, you can tell that she's feeling the ball well, but all of her balls are the same. They are in this, hit in the same pace. They hit in the same trajectory above the net. So I think Coco Goff has gotten really nice rhythm on her ground strokes now. And I didn't mind the little slices that Gracheva tried it a few times. At the 
license and she also attempted a job no, shot as well me. that okay in that instance didn't necessarily go in her favor but I think the point is just because maybe one point doesn't go your way doesn't mean you take that shot selection out of your toolbox you know just make sure it's the right moment to maybe throw it in surprise your opponent oh. she did get a couple errors off the golf ground strokes when she did use that off pace slice Oh. Love that. She's in danger of this starting to unravel for the French player. It's been a good period for golf the last 20, 25 minutes or so. Traffic. Great position now, set and three love. Oh. First line starting to come into view already. Just 52 minutes on the clock. During the sit down, we were just discussing the women's title. This is in the we're in the bottom half today, first of all. So that's the half that features Samalenka as the number two seed. Coco finds herself in the third quarter of the draw. If you're reading the draw from the top to the bottom, that's the number three seed. So she, in theory, would be projected to play Barbara Krajikova. Quarterfinals, Wimbledon champion, of course. There's uh, plenty of dangerous players to get past before. Let's start worrying about the quarterfinals. The seed she should play would be Svitolina in the third round. She's in the same section as Emin Faro, so an incredible year. Isn't she fellow American. She's had a fantastic year. He beat her at Wimbledon, incidentally. Round of 16. Iga Shontek is top seed as world number one, of course. In the top half, Elena Rybakina in that half as well as the, the number four seed, the two big players. Jess Pagula in that half as well has had a very good lead in to the US Open. some depth on that forehand cross court just so she could no, cut off that last ball just a couple steps forward on this one right here all it takes sometimes is one extra step into the court just cuts down on the reaction time for your opponent She knows that that was the wrong choice. The court was so open, but the way she ran to this to get a forehand, it's danger because either way you leave the entire court open, but she just, again, didn't have enough power on that, about that forehand. All in all, 
Four games to match off quickly. It would have been a, a good day at the office. Just another reminder to head to usopen.org. That's the official website, your online home for point by point live scoring. All the highlights are on there, the real time stats and draws, of course. So early in the tournaments, it's the official tournament website, usopen.org. Day one of 14 days of main draw action. Flushing Meadows to look forward to. of the season of course it's been a busy busy summer dancing from one major tournament to the next it doesn't feel too long ago since we were all watching the french open unfold at, at roller garris in paris goes way too fast <laughs> on to wimbledon the olympic games It's all about court position from Gracheva. As soon as she realized that Goff just couldn't get settled with the footwork, did a good job of just taking a couple steps inside the baseline. It's actually the first point that Gracheva has won on her second serve. This young lady is so quick up to that short ball. I think how she handled that, though, is a pretty good drop shot because it stayed relatively low over the net, and Coco was actually moving in the wrong direction. But look at how much acceleration gets through that ball, and it had to have that because any slower, and I think Garchevo would have had a play on that. Great control from Goff. Opportunity for third seed to break, and if she can, this one would surely be done. Up, going that kick down the tee, Goff expecting that backhand. That's where most of Kucheva's second serves have been going. On the clock. Heat of the day has just gone 3.30. Local time in the afternoon. This court in shade now. Oh. Oh. Struggled on serve today. She broke for the fifth time in the match.
A double fault hands over another break of serve, and that should be job done for Coco Goff. Set and five, love. It's been perhaps a little bit surprising how one sided this has been so far. 6 2 5, love. mind too much. Love it. It's one of those days, Jill, just any kind of victory after the, the, the summer she's had. And I don't want to dwell on that too much, but it has been a very different kind of run-in compared to the one she enjoyed this time last year. Any kind of win is uh, good news. I think any time you can get through that first round, I mean, all the players across the board will say there's going to be nerves coming into another Grand Slam event that's always going to be there. So it's not about avoiding them. It's how you be able to embrace those nerves, get through the first round. And you mentioned Goff you know, coming into this event, maybe, maybe not having as many wins as she did last year, winning DC and, of course, Cincinnati last year, two biggest events in her, in her career before winning the U.S. Open, but she said she's had more time now to be able to prepare. Coming into this Grand Slam, just a lot of a longer past this week that she's been able to have to adjust to these courts. By the way, it's looking like it's going to be Tatiana Maria from Germany who will uh, await in round two. Match point. In fact, she's just finished, uh, finished the job at court four. So, there's the German. It's, uh, it's her place in the second round, two and three today. Get her out of trouble. Yes. Got in 113 miles an hour. It takes it back to juice. Two points away. Advantage. From the body language, there's still work to be done in her mind in terms of the overall level. Despite the one-sided scoreline, yes, got her again. Yeah, that's the only reproach Gracheva will make herself after this match, or her team will make herself that she hasn't closed that serve down on important points. That's really cost her, especially at the beginning of the match. I wonder how different this might have been had she converted one of those break points early in the match. She didn't go, and here we are after 66 minutes. Go. At match point. <laughs> Coco Goff goes through inside our Thrash Stadium on day one at the Open. And it was comfortable in the end. The Americans' title defense is up and running. Job done, Jill Prevas. She will be delighted to get just over that first hurdle in any way, really, today. But to do it for the loss of just two games, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Very impressive. And it was it was a tricky start. I felt like it was very close. I know the scoreline's two in love, but those first four games were actually really tight. And it, it was a big challenge for Goff in the beginning to be able to hold serve, but the, from that moment on, she really did break down Gracheva's game. Gracheva just felt like as soon as she didn't get some of those break points, she started making a few more unforced errors. Maybe it got into the back of her mind that she wasn't able to convert or the way she handled those break points, but you got to give credit to Goff. She did serve big in those moments. Use that down the T-serve. I agree with Andrea. She didn't take that serve away from Goff at all, even if it's just moving your court position over there. But Goff will definitely be 
happy, be very happy with the way that she was able to get through that first round and being able to play on Ash. That's, that's big for us, the defending champion. We will hear from the defending champion. Well, first of all, congratulations, Coco. I know how much it must mean for you, so talk about what it means to you to be back on this court as defending champion and through the first round, which is never easy. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of pressure this tournament, but I'm just enjoying it. And, you know, last year was incredible, so I'm just bringing those vibes here. Whatever happens, happens. Um, and, yeah, if it's great and honor to be back here on Arthur Ashe and playing in front of you guys. Just through the very just the first couple of games that was a real arduous task for you to get through those how important is it and ex just explain to people how difficult it is first rounds maybe people think that you should win these types of matches but how difficult was the early part of this match um I mean, if I played this last week, I feel like it would have been really difficult. But, you know, my perspective changed a lot over seven days. So um, today I was, I wouldn't say I would be happy with what the result was, but I was just trying to enjoy the match. And um, I enjoyed it today. And obviously it was a little bit more of a straightforward match. But, um, you know, I feel like even if it was tighter, I think these are the moments you live for. So I'm just happy to be back here on this court and playing like I did. I know the last few weeks have been a little bit tough, but, you know, uh, I know if I can, you know, play here, I can play great tennis, and today I think was the best tennis I played in a while. So, Coco, you were here. We've seen the photos of you on Arthur Ashe Kids Day when you were like five, six, seven, trying to get in the shot behind Venus Williams. There are a lot of kids here today as well, and I noticed that you said in your press conference earlier, a couple of, just yesterday that you saw something on TikTok yes. that actually made you think a different perspective coming in here. Yes. So for all the Gen Zers and the young ones, what was told to you on TikTok? <laughs> oh, so somebody commented on my TikTok and they were just like, uh if you want you've won in life literally and figuratively and if you're there's no point of uh feeling pressure on yourself on a victory lap so i'm just treating this tournament like that if you defend something that means you won something if you did it that means you can do it again so whether i do it again this year or not i'm gonna i'm gonna do it again whether it's 2024 or not i will do it again all right so everybody on social she reads everything so be nice ladies and gentlemen through the second round coco got Yes, a warm reception for Coco. We're not sure if you can still hear us, Andrea, but if you can, what would uh, your assessment of that performance be? Fantastic. Great to have you caught. So thanks for all your input. We'll let you get back into the uh, the air conditioning. It's, it's probably pretty warm down there. <laughs> we will we will hear a lot more thanks, from Andrea. you through the uh, through the tournament, and we'll be seeing more of this young lady into the second round. She will play Tatiana Maria from Germany. A very different opponent, Maria. She's the type of player that is going to bring. A lot more variety to the court. She has that bat, nice backhand slice. She's going to use the drop shot a lot. So very different for Coco to have to come in and get ready for and, and prepare for it. But yeah, definitely did a great job of just staying within herself, staying focused in this match. It was tight, as we mentioned in the beginning, but she, she finished strong. And she said she's pleased with the fact that this is the best match she's played in a little while. So she'll take some confidence from that. Yeah, that's a, a strong message, isn't it? Good to hear. There's so much to to deal with in a run into this tournament. She's such a big superstar in this in this part of the world. All the, uh, the appointments and uh, sponsor duties she has to take care of in the run-up to the US Open, so she'll be pleased with, uh, with how she's come through today. There, there, there will be improvements that, that need to be made if she's going to work her way.